What's going on guys? Uh, in this video, I'm gonna keep on the whole home gym theme. Uh, so following the last video I did, giving you guys a gym of, uh, excuse me, a tour of my home gym, which is actually situated in my business. Um, I wanted to follow that up with a video uh, I'd like to call home gym tips. Now these are my tips uh, for either starting or building or just really just having a home gym. I've had a home gym for a long time. I used to have um, a, a, a home gym in my garage a long time ago and I didn't really enjoy that too much. I live in Colorado, cold weather and everything. I really didn't, I, I mean, I didn't mind it. I could deal with it. My wife didn't enjoy going out into the garage. Uh, so that kind of went away and I didn't have a home gym for a long time. Uh, and then when I started, when I opened my martial arts school, um, I actually rented a unit right next to my first location. It was very small. Uh, I think it was like 12 feet by 30 feet. I think probably the same space as what I'm working with now. Um, and I just threw a bunch of equipment in there and that was my basically my home gym. When I, when I wasn't teaching my classes, I would just go over to that other unit, office unit, and just work out in that unit. Um, when we expanded and opened this location uh, three, four, almost four years ago, um, we had enough space in this business, this location to actually transport our home gym into this business. Because again, like I said in the previous video, we're always here. So it just made sense to have the gym where we're at the most. Okay, let's start with tip number one. For number one, I'm gonna say, find your own space. Now, what I mean by that is, I, when I worked out at home, I went through a phase when my daughter was born that I had to, I couldn't get to the gym as much. So I, I was doing like P90X videos in the, in the living room and whatnot. Listen, that's not gonna work. You could get away with it, you could pull it off, and some people are very successful with it. I found that to be a little difficult. It, I pulled it off because I was driven, I was willing to put in the effort, but I didn't enjoy it. So find your own space, space away from other space. So what I'm saying is your living room should not double as your home gym. On the same note, I don't feel that your office should double as your home gym, your bedroom should double your home gym, or you throw a piece of equipment in your bedroom, you throw a piece of equipment in your office. That should not be considered your home gym. That is not a home gym. So if you have a big house and you have like your office and your gym in the basement, like your office is in this little corner and you have your a whole massive area of this gym, that could work, okay? Or if that's your setup in your garage. But what I'm saying is, is if you're setting up in a bedroom, don't double it, okay? It's just, it's just too much of a distraction. And I feel that if you're really gonna take your home gym serious, you should have your own space. Speaking of your own space, speaking on having your own space, it does not have to be a whole room or or a massive space, or excuse me, like a whole garage. Like if you can, you can use a bedroom. You just need enough space to move your body comfortably. Um, and then also, it all depends also, primarily, excuse me, on the type of workouts and equipment you feel you're gonna need to get your workouts in your home gym. Uh, if you're just starting out, I suggest that you just start with a small space again, that is yours and yours alone. Uh, of course, anyone else in the family that's gonna work out can use the same space, but that you could get away and really hone in and, and, and drill down and just focus on your workout, on yourself and your workout. Uh, if you can find a space, I mean, the six by six space, you know, eight by eight space, just a, a square that has enough space for you to move your body when you're first starting out. Especially if you are first starting out, then you probably shouldn't be too heavy with the weights um, if you really don't know how to train yet. Uh, and that kind of brings me to my next point. Tip number two, is start with minimal equipment. If you are just starting out, if you know how to train and you've spent time in gyms, sometimes that could be bad and it could be good. It's good because you know how to train and on one end, you know exactly what kind of equipment you like and so you'll know what you want in your home gym. On the flip side, sometimes you're married to some of that uh, equipment that fits just fine in a commercial gym or a smaller gym, but it will not fit well or comfortably into a small space or whatever you're working with in your home gym. So you have to take those things into consideration. So start with minimal equipment. Um, your body weight, like if you're just starting out training, you need to learn how to move your body first. So start with your body weight and then, then move up to resistance bands and booty bands, hip circles, uh, just starting with, again, very minimal equipment. Then you graduate to some dumbbells, if you can get some dumbbells right now, uh, maybe up to some kettlebells. You know, again, things that you can work, you can use in one isolated space if that's all you have. 
if you are working with a larger space and you can afford like your garage, your basement, or a bigger room that you can put actual resistance training equipment in, then you can graduate up to getting actual weights in that room. And there, now you can kind of decide what does that look like? Don't overload the room with equipment you do not need. Make sure, like if you are a squatter or you need to bench or you need to do anything like that, then you're gonna need a rack, right? But you don't need like a Nautilus machine or a cable pull machine if that's something A, that you can't afford or don't need to spend the money on, or B, you just don't have the room for it. So make sure you're being smart about what you're putting in your home gym. Um, sometimes you think you need a machine that you love using at a commercial gym or the gyms you used to train at, but when you come to your home gym, you really, there's a lot of modifications or ways that you can get that same workout with maybe some resistance bands or some different, some different free weights as opposed to using a machine. So you don't have to purchase like a leg press machine or a stepper machine uh, and take up a massive footprint in your home gym. Continuing with number two, when I talk about minimal equipment, that kind of segues into number three, or number two and number three, tip number two, number three, can probably be the same thing, but learn how to train and then add stuff as you go. So I kind of touched on that in, in tip number two. Learn how to train. Now, if you've only, if you only know how to work out in a commercial gym using machines and racks and all these other things, maybe it's time to really go to back to basics, back to body weight fundamental, you know, functional training with your body weight, with some light weights, with some bands, like really just learning how to train, how to exercise with your body, become familiar with that. And then as you get stronger and you want to add resistance or weights into your resistance training, then you can bring in the dumbbells and the kettlebells and barbells and weights and stuff like that. But maybe this is an opportunity when you're starting out your home gym to really go back to the bare bones and just start with body weight and just learn how to train as you progress, you can add equipment as you go. This can save you a lot of stress, money, time, and effort because you don't end up, you know, going out spending thousands and thousands of dollars on these massive pieces of equipment that you think you want or that you think you need, but you really don't. And maybe just learning how to train in a very basic sense, a very basic functional sense, you can save yourself, again, a lot of money, time, stress, and effort. Tip number four is aesthetics. When you decide what your space is that you are gonna make your home gym, design it in a way that you would want to be in there. Design it in a way that you like. If you like a dingy, like a gully, like real gutter gym, like you want it to look manly, like then that's your thing. If you want it to look more high-end, more boutique style, then that's your thing. Like make sure the space fits what you are feeling, like what makes you happy, what makes you energetic, uh, that right down to the, the, the color of the walls that you paint or throwing up mirrors or not having mirrors. Whatever is gonna be the best design for you to keep you pumped up and motivated when you're in there to get the work done. On that note, I want to give one warning though, make sure your home gym looks like a training space. Make sure it looks like a gym, okay? It doesn't look like a bedroom that you have to pull things out of a closet I, and that goes back to number one, where I don't feel you should double the space, where you have, this is your like guest bedroom, but you also use it as a gym. So you have to put everything away when you're done and so forth, because sometimes that will eat into your motivation because you do not want to go get everything out um, and put your gym together before you actually get to exercising. So make sure that it does look like a training space. So when you get in there, you know what your intention is, you know, that it's time to train and you're excited to do it. Tip number five, respect the space. Respect the space. You respect the space by keeping it clean and organized. Just like you would or you are required to put things away at a, a, a commercial gym when you're done using it, show the same respect if not more respect at your home gym. Organize things neatly, make sure you know where everything is, when you take it out, put it back, keep it clean. When, when a gym becomes cluttered is when it gets away from you and then it, it's you start to throw a few things in there. First, you don't put the weights away. Then you throw some boxes in there. Then you start to pile other things in there. And then before you know it, it's like your mom's Airdyne from like the 80s or exercise bike that becomes a coat rack or a dirty clothes hamper uh, that you hang all your clothes on. You wanna be very careful, it's a slippery slope and it can happen very fast. 
So take pride in the space, respect the space for what it is. It is your temple, or excuse me, yeah, it is your temple that you go to pay homage and to, and to pray, you know, build the temple that is your body, right? It is your sanctuary. It's where you go to train and it should look like a training space and you should respect it as such. And you should make sure that again, you keep it clean and you keep it organized. Okay, tip number six, uh, set a routine and be regimented. Now, by that, what I mean is it is now in your home. It is very easy to ignore. It is very easy to, uh, you would think that since it's in your home, it'd be, it's, it'd be so much more easy for you to go work out, but it's actually the opposite. When it's in your home, it's just as easy to ignore it as you ignore whatever power tools you have in your garage or whatever projects or, or, or woodworking or whatever things you have thrown into your garage or your basement or a spare room that you promised yourself you were gonna get to eventually and you never do. A home gym is just as risky, okay? Set a routine, what time you're gonna work out, what's that routine look like, do you work out right after work, slam that workout, get back in, start making your dinner? Do you get up in the morning, hit that workout, eat your breakfast, then go upstairs and get ready for work? Whatever that routine is, be regimented and that will keep you on task and that will keep you excited about using that space, your, the home gym that you have created. Number seven, now this is crucial. It probably should have been in top three, but entertainment, okay? What I mean by entertainment, you know, as far as cardio equipment goes, I don't use treadmills. I'm not a fan of treadmills. They take up space. Everyone, first thing they do, they throw a treadmill in their home gym. Ugh, whatever, man. I use body weight training for my cardio. And then I also like the Airdyne and I like the row machine. If I'm ever on an Airdyne or a row machine, I do use my phone and kind of like use my earbuds and watch like a show on Netflix or watch some YouTube videos or something. So entertainment if, if it's your garage if it's your basement if you want to set up a tv for the times that you are actually using a cardio machine or if you just like to train with that playing in the background have at it man but have some entertainment if you don't need a visual because you don't want a distraction but you need music for me i'm a music person i love that here when i used to go to the commercial gyms go to other gyms i always had to wear uh headphones i didn't mind that i actually liked it but then when i started training my own space i loved that i could just crank the speaker, play whatever music I wanted and didn't have like wires and now they have all these Bluetooth, but whatever. I didn't have anything on my head and I could just train, man. So I like music. So if it's, if whether it's a speaker system and honestly with the way the, these little portable speakers are made nowadays, you don't need a speaker system, just get a speaker, whatever, but entertainment, television, music, whatever, make sure you have some entertainment to keep you uh, motivated. Now, if you have, if you want to be respectful to the rest of the household, if it's a concern of work waking up your family or your roommates or whatever, or being just being noisy, then yeah, you may have to go back to just using headphones in your own home gym, but just make sure you have some entertainment. And last, but certainly not least, number eight, stick to the meat and potatoes, guys. Meat and potatoes means no fancy gadgets, no unnecessary gadgets. Like I said in the first uh, couple of tips, listen, these $3,000 wall mounted machines that have pulled, you know, some people are into that, some people have the money for that, I see it as unnecessary, but if it's something you need, I don't want to hate on you. Same with Peloton, but I don't need any of those things. And I feel that people need to learn how to train on their own. But anyway, don't go after these expensive or even inexpensive. There's plenty of those gadgets that make all these promises. Stay clear of that stuff, man. Stick to the meat and potatoes. Learn to use your body weight. Learn to use free weights. I graduate to barbell work, you know, learn how to work out in a very basic sense. Keep it functional, man. Keep it simple and stay away from like really, you know, I, it's lack of a better word, like stupid gadgets that make a lot of promises. There are a few things out there that are, that benefit in different ways, benefit you in different ways. And if there's something that you feel will benefit something you're trying to do, then that's fine. But seriously, just be careful and just stay away from unnecessary or I'll even say stupid gadgets that you really don't need, okay? Meat and potatoes when it comes to building your home gym. All right, guys, well, that's my take. Those are my tips. Those are my eight tips to either starting or restarting or building up or anything regarding like getting your home gym situated and getting in there and getting to work. I know that right now the home gym is the thing. People are moving away from commercial gyms and I don't know if that's gonna shift 
when things go back to normal and I don't know if people are all gonna run back to commercial gyms because they're not, you know, it could have, it could go either way to be honest. But some people are, a majority of people are saying that they truly are enjoying their home gym experience. So if that is you and you were looking for a few tips, I hope this was helpful to you. And if it was, man, please be sure to show us some love by, by uh, hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel and we'll keep this thing going, okay? As always, keep fighting for fit, no excuses, and we will see you in the next video.